Hi, this is Charlie from Path of the Bee. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make box joints for a beehive with a table saw. Let's get started. So here's my cut list and I want to explain it just a little bit. The ends and sides are three quarters thick um, by their length. The width is determined by what type of box you're trying to build. So I'll be building a deep box today. So the pieces that I've cut are nine and five eighths wide. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about what a bee box joint is and how it's different from a standard box joint. Um, all bee box joints are seven eighths of an inch wide. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a shallow, medium, or a deep. There's a special there's a special cut here on the top because of the rabbit. So this this joint is not as deep as the rest of them, and it's it's only five eighths of an inch instead of seven eighths. This is where we have to start. So we start here, we cut down our first, our first peg, full size peg, is underneath of that, and it's 7 eighths, 7 eighths, and then at the bottom, it's, it's always a random number. <clears throat> There's no bee box that comes out perfect with a 7 eighths cut um, to have a, an even deal. So leave a bigger tab for the bottom. Don't leave a little sliver. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to want to do is make a sacrificial fence so I can uh, make the rabbits in the ends. Those are going to end up being 3 eighths of an inch deep by 5 eighths of an inch wide. So what I'll do is, to start, I'm going to go ahead and lower down the blade of the table saw below the surface. Now I come over here with, uh, with my sacrificial piece and I just grabbed a 2 by 4 um, Anything that's kind of wide, uh, the permanent one that I normally use, I've built out of two pieces of three-quarter plywood that are laminated together. But I'm just going to run this over here and estimate it to where I've got just slightly less than three-eighths uh, or five-eighths so I can adjust it later. And then I'm going to go ahead and clamp this uh, board onto my table saw fence. And when I do this, I want to leave enough room under here, under the clamp, to pass a three-quarter board. Okay, now that I've got this done, I'm going to start the table saw, raise the blade into this 2 by 4 to cut out um, a relief notch. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the blade at 3 eighths of an inch depth. I have a handy gauge here. I'm going to use that to get it exactly right. 3 eighths of depth. I want my cut 5 eighths deep, so I'm going to go ahead and use the bench rule on a combination square to, uh, to get that adjusted up. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to determine which edge or corner I'm going to want to put this rabbit into. Now, this grain here, this is, pl this is plain sawn here, and is highly susceptible to warpage. And the problems that I've had with boxes, I've, I've discovered that you do not want this at the top of the box. Works pretty good down towards the bottom with the bigger box joints to hold everything together, but for our little groove, we want to, our rabbit, we're going to want it in... Uh, as much quarter grain as we can get. So I want to put it on this this end here and then I decide what I want to be inside and outside. Um, no particular reasoning there. Okay, so now I have a uh, 5 eighths wide by 3 eighths deep rabbit in, uh, in the top of my ends. I'll do this to all my ends before I move on to the next step. Okay, so here we have the same similar grain. I'm going to want this down at the bottom. Uh, I'll put my rabbit up here. Determining the inside and outside, here I have a knot. 
Um, and if this is up on the outside, if you can see that knot runs through this board at an angle. So if I don't get super great pain on there, um, it could begin to leak moisture in that direction. If I put it around this way, it will shed water out. So I'm going to put this on the outside, just like yay. Okay, so now that I've got all of my rabbits cut, the next thing I'm going to do is build the, the box joint jig. So I'll remove this sacrificial fence. Now this is just a piece of scrap 1x6 and uh, a miter gauge. You're going to make certain that your miter gauge is true 90 degrees to your blade. So double check it with a large square. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to, a couple inches in from the end here, um, we're just going to make a pass. This is still adjusted at 3 8 and that's where we want it. I'm going to make a pass over here, 7 8 wide dado stack. Okay, so then here is the piece of uh, 7 8 wide, 3 8 thick, about 3 inches long. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to put it here in the in this in this board and now I'm going to fasten that with a couple of brad nails and I'm going to set them with a nail set. So what I'm using for brad nails are uh, 3 quarter by 18. They're really little. Um, I want to use something really small. The main purpose is just to hold this little, this little tab in this board. I'll just use a nail set to just set them slightly so they're not scraping on the table saw. Okay, so now the next thing I'm going to want to do is I want to get this adjusted to the right distance on my saw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another piece of this scrap that I cut 7 eighths wide and I'm going to set it in here next to my blade. Pull these together. This is just a spacer so I know where to fasten this board to the miter. Okay, I'm going to use a couple of one inch uh, drywall screws to fasten this to the, to the miter, being very careful to keep everything lined up. Okay, now while I'm here at this stage and I still have this set at 3 8 um, I'm going to go ahead and cut the initial uh, joint, the initial cut on the long pieces. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a board down here and I'm going to use it to transfer the distance from um, my dado peg up here to the top. Now, I need to, I need to have the first five-eighths of an inch on the very first cut on the board. So how that comes out is, is that I'm going to measure back an inch and an eighth and make a mark. This mark is where I'm going to line the edge of my sideboard up to make the first cut. And once again, we want to check end grain. I want the plane saw at the bottom and the, uh, and the quarter saw up on the top of my board. So I'll just come in here like this. I'll come over to my, my established mark. I've got my first cut. 
I want to do this first cut on the top of all of my side pieces before I make my next adjustment and finish cutting all the rest of the box joints. Okay, now I want to adjust the saw blade to three quarters of an inch. That's the thickness of our stock. Okay, so I'm going to take an end with a rabbit in it, and I'm going to line it up to where the first cut ends up being exactly below the, remain, the remaining of the rabbit piece there. So this first cut on the ends is going to end up right there. While I'm holding that there, I'm just going to use my pencil and make an additional mark on my uh, on my jig here of where that first cut is supposed to be. Okay, now we're ready to just start making box joints. The uh, very important thing to remember is to never back up through a dado. We're able to do it with our jig because it's permanently attached to the miter and cannot change angle. But, but our board, if we're not holding exactly proper, we could twist slightly and, and make a big ugly mess. So never back up through the dado. Just one cut, move it out of the way. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to punch this out to the right size. I'm just going to push my miter right through that. Leave this wide segment here on the ends. And then for our sides, now that we have that little notch cut out, we can go ahead and begin with those. This will need to be removed. Okay, well, let's see how it fits together. Okay, so it's ready to put on a nailing jig and go ahead and nail it up, and we'd have us a, a bee box. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.